golf, it's an elegant sport, thoughtful, restrained. But inside the rubber heart of the golf ball, there's a world of violence, collision, and speed. When a club impacts a golf ball, the impact only takes about half of one thousandth of a second. And in that time, the golf ball deforms and the material compresses and then it expands. And it's how much energy is lost in that process that determines the speed of the golf ball. And the material that's responsible for conserving energy, the engine that drives the golf ball, is synthetic rubber. This is polybutadiene rubber, and this is the main ingredient that goes into our Callaway golf ball centers. And we use it because it's one of the most resilient polymers out there. The golf club smashes into the ball, flattening it. Inside, the rubber molecules are stretched and squeezed, colliding with and rubbing across each other, producing heat. As they snap back to their original positions, the energy that isn't lost to heat becomes motion. But rubber formulations vary and the more tightly linked and organized the polymer chains, the less energy lost to friction. The molecules are like a spring, and that's the difference between different grades of polybutadiene. With some polybutadienes, they're very linear, and they're very efficient springs. Designers at Callaway's Tech Center in Carlsbad, California, measure the spring of their rubber formulations by having a robot named Big Bertha whack golf ball after golf ball with a consistent force. A technician measures and analyzes the results. We always want to make a very resilient core, but different covers and different types of golf balls for different type of players require different compression. There's theory and then there's practice. And practice for Callaway takes place thousands of miles away from Carlsbad, California at the company's manufacturing facility in Chicopee, Massachusetts. Here, workers churn out cores by the millions. Callaway's core recipe is a closely guarded proprietary secret. But in general, it includes some mix of up to five different polybutadiene rubbers, peroxide vulcanizing or curing agent, activators to initiate curing, and accelerators to speed the whole process. When the recipe is all fully put together, what will happen is that we'll bring the charge up to the internal mixer. We'll cross blend and masticate the product to make sure that all of the fillers and polymers break down and fully mix. Once mixed, the hot rubber is discharged onto the mill. The rubber comes down hot, so it warms up the rollers. So we need water to keep these rollers nice and cool. If they get too hot, this stuff runs bad. So what you see in front of you is the polybutadiene, which has gone through the stages of mixing, and what this will finally become is the HX Hot Bite. The rubber is extruded into slugs and then compression molded into a round golf ball core. You're elevating it past 300 degrees, and that's what initiates the peroxide to start solidifying into a core. Through heat, we're exciting the chemicals that are inside of this product, which changes the properties, which start making it from a rubber pliable product to a solid product, which is now the center. At this stage of the operation, I'm surrounded by all of our main core constructions. You can see we're all surrounded by different colors. Each color represents a different brand. With the heavy lifting over, the rest of the process, coating the core in its jacket, is more of a finesse job that begins with surrounding the core with an injection molded cover. It gets degated and leaves a seam around the product, which then goes into a seam buffering operation, which removes the seam. We go into a finishing, cleansing, removing debris. We go into a prime paint system. We go into a stamping of the cover. And then we go into a clear coat operation, which protects the image on the golf ball. One purpose of the ball's plastic covering is to protect the core. The core is really fragile. I mean, if you had to, uh, to hit this with a driver, you, you'd break it into pieces. Rubber is renowned for its strength, so we decided to test the toughness of the naked cores by feeding them to Big Bertha and her 100 mile per hour swing. Without covers, the plucky polybutadiene rubber cores took the beating and bounced back for more without damage. But how did they fly? This core flew 150 yards with 100 mile per hour club head speed. A typical golf ball would have flown 230 yards. The reason why? Aerodynamics. This core, just as fast as a golf ball, doesn't have dimples or any other aerodynamic surface on it, and therefore 
has a lot of drag. Okay, so rubber doesn't fly, but you still can't make golf balls without it. Polybutadiene is still the best material to use in a golf ball core.